Welcome to JP Roofing Fan Nation. Football is back after an unexpected little vacation. Wow, well, thanks a lot, Titans. But joining us now from Philadelphia is NFL reporter and star of the Gun on One podcast, Derek Gunn. Welcome, Derek. How you guys doing? Thanks for having me. We're doing great. How about you? How are you doing? I mean, you've been covering the Eagles for 23 years, but you were here in Pittsburgh beforehand covering the Steelers. How could you abandon Pittsburgh and the Steelers for the Eagles? You know what they say, money talks. You gotta go. You gotta follow the money trail. Yeah, I was there in Pittsburgh from uh, 1987. I had a chance to cover the Penguins back-to-back -back Stanley Cup championship with Lemieux, Lemieux Yager, and all those guys. Had to cover the Pirates when it was Bonds, Benia, Drabic, Van Slyke, all those guys. Great teams when I was playing back then. You know, Bubby Brister is still one of my all-time favorite Pittsburgh quarterbacks. I have some great memories. Two of my three kids were born in Pittsburgh, so I still have ties to Pittsburgh. Well, that's good to hear, but let's talk about the matchup this week, Gunner. What All right. should we expect? Knockdown, drag out. The good thing for Pittsburgh fans is there will be no Philadelphia fans at this game. Um, so I think it's going to be a pretty good game, a grudge match. You know what's interesting is that Philadelphia hates Pittsburgh more than Pittsburgh hates Philadelphia. And I think there's a little jealousy there because the Steelers have the six Super Bowls and Philadelphia finally has its one. Uh, but, but it's a great rivalry. Unfortunately, they only play each other like every four or five years. You have a prediction in this game. What do you think is going to happen, Derek? You're closer than anyone to the Eagles. I mean, I personally think the Steelers are going to win. I, I, know, I know Ben Roethlisberger is 2-2 two and two, uh, against the Eagles, and they haven't played for some time. And I just think with, with the way Pittsburgh's defensive scheme is set up, the way they blitz their linebackers, Roethlisberger running that team is a lot different than anybody else. Um, and the Eagles are so beat up right now. They just lost two more players. They're down off. Their offensive line is like a picket fence. And so don't tell anybody in Philadelphia, <laughs> whatever you do. But I'm leaning towards the Steelers this week. Hey, maybe the biggest question before we go here. Yep. For many brothers sandwich or a cheese oh, steak. Oh, don't do it. Don't Come do on. It. Don't do it. I have don't do to, it. right? Don't do I it. got to. Well, <laughs> consider, considering where I live, you know I'm going to say the cheese steak. And don't get me wrong. I love the many brothers. Don't get me wrong. But I got to <laughs> lean towards the cheesesteak. Well, Derek, thanks a lot. I appreciate the time. Uh, have fun out there in Philadelphia. Hopefully, we see you soon. Yeah, man. It's always good to talk to Yun's guys in Pittsburgh. Did I just say that? <laughs> the Yun's guys. Thanks a lot, right. Derek. Appreciate the time tonight. Thank you so much, Derek. Let's stay in the city of brotherly love to meet the Steelers' secret weapon. Well, he spent his career behind enemy lines in Philly, but he is a turtle creaker for life. You know, not to be morbid, but this is what I'm going to be buried in. <laughs> Raymond, your room looks <laughs> awesome. I can't believe there's a Steelers, Pirates, and Penguins Pittsburgh-themed room in the middle of Philadelphia. When I moved out here, I, I knew that uh, I was going to be a Pittsburgh fan. What, what do the other Philly fans think of you? Eagles fans, they're, they're nasty. <laughs> they really are. They are nasty. Now, how um, long do you think you've been collecting all these things? about uh, late late 80s but 91 92 when the penguins won the stanley cup is when everything just exploded and my wife actually told me i needed to see someone <laughs> i'm like no nah, I'm, I'm good so how many pieces do you have how many pieces <laughs> yeah how many things Twenty thousand, ten thousand. 10 000. I, I would say tens of thousands i really do tens it, of it's, thousands it's, how many display cases 32 display cases, um, an eight-foot bar display case, a display coffee table, and two display uh, end tables. You can layer things at your place. Exactly, yes. I got uh, four sliding walls. Is there something you like more than everything else? I actually have two. One is a Jerome Bettis signed helmet, and then the other piece is uh, Dan Rune. He asked him to sign a hat for me, and I got a picture of that. So that was, that, those are my two great memorabilia that I have. Anything that you might have spent a lot of money on. I got a Juju helmet signed, Rocky Blower signed. I got a few pieces. It, it, it just, the whole room is expensive. There's a terrible towel quilt that I had made. That, I forgot about that. That cost me over a thousand. So what do people say when they show up and they walk through that room? Their first reaction is their jaw drops. Flyers fans come in there. I got uh, Eagles fans, Dallas fans come in here and they're like, they're in here once, they don't come back. <laughs> you got about everything you can imagine in that room. Is there anything that you're looking for that you want? Is there something that you're missing? I'm hoping to uh, hit the lottery so I can make this bigger. <laughs> That's what I'm looking for. <laughs> With the Steelers playing the Eagles coming up, what is your prediction? 
24-7. Steelers. I like it. I like those odds. <laughs> <laughs> he literally has thousands of items and is finding new treasures every day. All right, keep it going, Ray. You're bringing us great mojo. Now, let's talk about tailgate food, Rich. This week was National Pierogi Day. And I love pierogies, Daisy. So do Fan Nation contributors Kendall and Mike, who hit the streets to celebrate the favorite food of the 412. It's possibly the most gratifying food in the whole room. Pierogies. It's a Pittsburgh tailgate tradition. So in celebration of National Pierogi Day, we're in Aetna at Cop Out for a crash course in pierogi. Why pierogies? That's a good question. I was in law enforcement for about 35 years. I started making pierogies uh, for fun and people wanted them. And so that sort of brought me to this path of being a pierogi papa. Okay, what we're gonna do today is we're gonna do a little pierogi boot camp. We already have dough on the belt and we run it through to thin it out to the thickness that we wanna get our pierogies. Different pierogies are different thicknesses. Something like the mac and cheese needs a little thicker dough. <laughs> then we're gonna get the cutter involved here. What we do is we lower the cutting wheels. If you're big, you should be behind uh -huh. me with your arms around me. Just yeah. Like me. Um, you know, watch what happens. Oh. Oh. Let's go. My granddaughter is about a year old and she was putting pierogies in a bag. A child could do this, is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, Mike and Kendall, Lisa's gonna show you how we fill and pinch the pierogies right now. First thing, you get enough filling in the spoon, press it into the dough, use your thumbs and your fingers to pinch together. I was the pierogi queen two years ago. The pierogi queen? The pierogi queen. Did the you get a pierogi pinching queen? Did I got a crown. crown? I got a crown, a t-shirt, yeah. there was a contest, and I beat everyone. <laughs> uh, these are wonderful. They're full. Yes. They're closed all the way. We can charge more because they're celebrity at <laughs> Yes. Absolutely. These are perfect. Up. You guys are hard. Yay! Yay. <laughs> but mine are better, right? I don't know if these are always. <laughs> All right, so what we're gonna do now that you guys pinch these, we'll get a basket, drop seven or eight in each basket, put a butter on the grill. Butter the... <laughs> I'm gonna just move the onions around. Wait, 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 butter. <laughs> Throw them on there, hear that nice little sizzle. Oh, you made this look way easier than it is. Okay. And a little bit more, a little bit more butter. We came to cop out pierogies to learn from the best. And we did. But why would we ever make our own when we can just come to cop out? Thanks, Mike and Kendall. Really tough assignment. Can you say food coma?